Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. I'm here to help you find the answers to the most frequently asked questions from my clients about self-directed retirement accounts. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. Welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. Today's episode, we want to tackle three important questions. One on adding additional funds to an IRA investment. You can use personal funds, doesn't need to be IRA funds. Second, about crowdfunding investments in a self directed IRA. How does it work? Any tips? Anything to consider? And then thirdly, is if you do a investment with a self-directed IRA, LLC with checkbook control and get a 1099 back after you complete your transaction, what do you need to do with it? So three superb questions. And uh, if you give me the next seven or so minutes, I will teach you everything you need to know on these three related questions. Well, not related, three important questions, I should say. So buckle up and without further ado, Let's get started. First question from Paulina O. And Paulina wants to know, hi, I have an investment that needs additional funds. What are my options? Can I use personal funds or do I have to use IRA funds? So really good questions. Um, generally, my position is if you make the investment with personal funds, you should probably, with IRA funds, excuse me, <laughs> you should probably make the additional contribution with IRA funds, right? So if you own, if you put 100K into a private equity deal and your IRA owns a private equity deal and it needs an additional capital commitment, your IRA should make that additional capital commitment. You should not, right? That potentially could be a self-dealing, conflict of interest, and even uh, could trigger a prohibited transaction. Now, let's say you own a home. You own it 100% in your IRA and it needs some extra money. I would personally suggest not using your own personal money, but you have options, right? You can make contribution to seven or eight thousand dollars if you're over 50 of IRA funds if you're short you could also do another transfer rollover of IRA funds from a former 401k employer account or from another IRA tax-free or you can borrow money but I suggest borrowing it from a non-disqualified person so a non-lineal descendant a non-parent non-child non-spouse non-daughter-in-law non-son-in-law not entity you control 50 percent or more or controlled by such persons Right, a friend, neighbor, uncle, cousin, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, uh, whatever. It just can't be a not a, a disqualified person. Um, that is the safest bet. I really would rather you, Paulina, not put any personal money into a deal that you already have an IRA interest. Now, listen, if you have an LP interest in a fund and you want to invest as another limited partner and you're going to own less than 50%, no problem. You can come in personally, right? Like Adam could own fund X, 1% of my IRA, 1% personally. That's not an issue. What I don't want you to do is let's say you've committed to make $100,000 commitment to this fund. You put $50,000 already in your IRA. Now you're short and you want to put in the rest 50,000 personally. I suggest not doing that. I'd rather you do that through other IRAs, other retirement accounts, or just a loan from a non-disqualified third party. I think that is the safest approach and that will get you around any private transaction issue. So thank you, Paulina, for that question. Second question from YouTube. Can I use a self directed IRA to invest in a crowdfunding investment? So generally, yeah, right? There's only three things you cannot do with an IRA. You can't buy life insurance, collectibles. And then thirdly, any transaction that directly or indirectly is controlled or benefits a disqualified person. And as I just mentioned, the disqualified person is you, lineal descendants, parents, children, spouse, daughter-in-law, son-in-law or any entities controlled 50% or more by such person. So as long as you don't control that crowdfunding deal, no one in your family does or no entity you control, then sure, your IRA can invest in a crowdfunding deal. Reg CF, they're very popular. If the deal is looking to raise less than $5 million, very minimal filing requirements, non-accredited investors can invest. So very, very advantageous for uh, retirement investors. Of course, please, please. Do your diligence, make sure it's the right investment for you. Um, look who's promoting it, look who's managing it, look at their track record, look at the potential financial returns, right? Obviously you still gotta do your homework and research and make sure it's a good deal, but 
you can do it for sure, whether it's on a platform or just some friends and family type arrangement. One other thing to keep in mind, if the crowdfunding enterprise, the business, for example, is operating through an LLC, you may have this tax called the UBIT, unrelated business income tax, which is a tax of up to 37% on net income of more than 15,000 bucks because your IRA owns an active trader business through an LLC. Now, if your IRA is investing in a corporation like Apple or any C Corp, right? The reason UBIT doesn't apply to publicly traded companies, mutual funds, ETFs, is they are set up as C Corps, right? And C Corp blocks UBIT. So there's nothing you have to worry about. But if it's an LLC, a pass through entity, then UBIT could apply. So just something to keep in mind on a crowdfunding type deal. Uh, but that's a great, great question. And yeah, crowdfunding is a, a really popular investment. Just, of course, do your diligence. Third and final question of today's podcast from Justin G. Justin wants to know, I did an investment with a checkbook control IRLC and received a 1099 in the name of the LLC when I sold my investment. What do I do with the 1099? So not much you can do, right? Assuming the 1099 is made out to the LLC, it should not be made out to you, Justin, right? Because your LLC made the investment. So when you made the investment, you may have had to complete a W-9 form, beneficial ownership. And the B-O, well, the W-9 form, not the beneficial ownership interest, that's a different form. The W-9 form will tell, will tell the IRS who the owner of the LLC is. So if the LLC is a single member LLC, it would show that the IRA is the owner and you would actually put an exempt payee code of one to let the IRS know that, hey, the owner of the LLC is tax exempt. So don't go chasing that owner, that beneficial owner for tax because it's tax exempt. So that's important. And sometimes I suggest that my clients just submit a W-9 just to show the promoter of the investment that if the single member LLC, that the owner is a IRA, you complete the exempt pay code, I think under box four, you put a one there. So the IRS knows it's a retirement account and they don't have to start chasing you for income on the 1099. If they don't want a W-9, um, then obviously just make it clear that the IRA is the owner. If it's a partnership, the K-1 will show the owner is an IRA. So just let the promoter know that the LLC is owned uh, by IRAs so that you'll um, the K-1 will distinguish and identify that, which would be helpful to the IRS. IRS. Um, now, that being said, there are occasions, I, I deal with this a handful of times each year, well, a client's going to get a 1099, the uh, promoter of the investment screws up and they just issue a 1099. And for some reason, the IRS says, um, you know, sends you a letter and says, hey, why didn't you report that income on your 1040? Assume because they're assuming that the owner of that LLC is you, Justin. Um, what happens in that case? Just let us know if you're a client or part of our compliance service. We will uh, write back to the IRS, let them know that the IRA is the owner, provide a copy of the operating agreement, and we'll test to that as the IRA custodian. And trust me, it will go away. I've been doing this 14 years, never had an issue. So don't worry, nine out of 10, you or more, nine, 99%, you're not gonna have to deal with anything. But remember, make sure you let the promoter of the investment know. If it's a single member LC, the owner's an IRA. You could request to complete a W-9 form. Some folks think it's tedious. I think it's a good thing because it shows the promoter and the IRS that the owner of the LC is a retirement account. It's a partnership, the K-1 should, uh, identify that the owner of that partnership, or at least that particular owner receiving the income uh, is tax exempt, and therefore there should not be any concern about uh, reporting of taxable income that flows through. So thank you, Justin. Thank you, the individual on YouTube who submitted a question on crowdfunding. Thank you, Paulina. If anyone has any questions, um, let us know. You can email us always at info diary financial. You can just submit a question on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, it will get to me to say, you know, you can leave a comment to a question or just say for Adam or ask Adam or add mail. And trust me, it'll get to me. There's a lot of great questions in the queue. So definitely check out our uh, podcast. That will be upcoming in the coming months. There's one every week, generally drops yeah, every Thursday or Friday, depending on, you know, <laughs> when we uh, want to drop it. Sometimes we just like tease you guys, but no, it's fun. And if you do enjoy it, please, um, if you can give a nice review or just a good rating, that will help boost the podcast so more people get to listen to it and obviously hopefully learn from it, right? That's the whole point. 
So I do this stuff, right? Uh, I love doing it, but I hope uh, I, I interest a um, number of folks out there who become uh, better, smarter, self directed investors and ultimately could uh, de design, develop more tax advantageous investments, get ideas, just become better, richer investors. That's the whole point of it, right? I'll say it again. I say it every podcast. The retirement system is rigged in our favor. It's not a zero-sum game. We all could be wealthy using the retirement system, taking advantage of the power of deferral, compounded returns, um, just about education, learning, being curious, right? Just be curious. There's an amazing tax advantageous opportunities for retirement account investors, whether through an IRA, a Roth, 401k, Roth 401k, defined benefit plan. There's just so many amazing ways to save, generate deductions, generate tax-free wealth, just about knowing the rules and starting, yeah. Getting good habits, trusting the process. It works. It's guaranteed. It's based off math. Simple. That's it for today's podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I'll see everyone again next week. Ciao.